Now. 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 Spencer said now, so I think we're live. Hope you're having a good evening. Now he's shaking his head no. Are we live? <laughs> Spencer told me not to go over here. So I'm going to try to stay right here. Hope everybody's getting logged in. We're going to take a few minutes to let people log in. Is my time messed up? No, you're good. Hi, Anslet. Hi, Gwen. Help me out, baby. Am I, am yeah, I right? You look fine. My uh, dress coordinator is helping me look good tonight. I hope everybody had a wonderful day on this beautiful rainy Thursday. It's the day the Lord hath made. And uh, it's been good to be with my family a little bit today and be at home. They made me slave and work and uh, had to clean Landon or Spencer's room, readjust the room and rearrange the room and move beds and uh, dressers and vacuum and clean the fans. So I have worked all day, but it's been a good day. It's been good to be with the family. Excited about being here tonight to go uh, live to our Youth for Truth and uh, to be a blessing to those that may be watching all around the country. Thank you for being with us. Just taking a moment here to let folks get logged in. I know a lot of folks are watching different things tonight. There are a lot of um, live events taking place. Brother Ralph Sexton's live jubilee up in Asheville, North Carolina uh, with the Milan Hayes family there tonight. We're just watching a little bit of that. And uh, so wherever you're watching tonight, we thank you for being with us. You could have been in many places tonight watching different live events. But thank you for joining us tonight and being a part of, of these few moments as we share from the Word of God. Got a little thought on our heart, something I preached years ago and uh, just been focusing on it for quite a while in the last two weeks. And I want to try to encourage you in the things of the Lord. Trust that it is a good night. What's going on? Are we good? Back home? We're good now. All right. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I was getting this weighed down, and so I guess something went wrong, but hopefully we're back on. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to be in Isaiah 41. If you have your Bible, look at a verse here and take a thought from a verse and just uh, give you some thoughts here tonight to try to encourage you in these days. I'm thankful for the land that we live in, thankful for our leadership. And I know that uh, we may not always agree with all the leadership and what's being uh, the decisions made, but I thank God for the leadership of this land. And uh, we're looking forward to the glad day when things kind of semi get back to normal, when uh, we can worship together in the Lord's house. We're excited about the thoughts for this Sunday, the possibilities uh, for this outdoor service, and uh, we're excited about what God is going to do. Trust you'll be able to join us uh, if you're a member of Harvest, if you're around the Jonesboro area, uh, 11 o'clock Sunday morning at Harvest Baptist Tabernacle on the Walt Stevens Road. Uh, we'll be having a drive up service. We're excited about this. Really looking for the day, uh, just longing for the time when our people get to be together to worship the Lord again in God's house. And uh, that will be a glad day. And we're just thankful that we still have the opportunity to worship, that we have the opportunity to sing and preach for the glory of God. And we have the means to put the gospel message out that Jesus loves and Jesus saves. In Isaiah chapter 41 tonight with a few thoughts. Isaiah is writing, and uh, when you get to Isaiah chapter 40, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, Isaiah is exalting his wonderful Lord and and. Uh, Jehovah God of Israel in Isaiah chapter 40, uh, he describes the goodness and the greatness of God in his protection and his works for or, or his creation and his works for Israel. And in Isaiah chapter 41, he's exalting how big God is and the things that God is doing for the poor and needy. And in Isaiah 41 verse 20, he says, God does all this that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this. That they may see and consider that the hand of the Lord hath done this. You find that phrase, the hand of the Lord, 38 times in the Bible. The hand of the Lord. I got to thinking about this several years ago and preached this sometime back, a good while back. I think when Landon was even way back in the youth group long ago. 
But I got to thinking about this years ago, and these thoughts got in my mind last week again. And so I just want to exalt Christ as Isaiah did. I want to exalt Christ in the mighty hand of the Lord. The mighty hand of the Lord. When you think about the hand of the Lord, there are five things tonight I want to point out about the hand of the Lord and exalt Christ and lift up Christ tonight and magnify how wonderful and how great he is. When you think about the hand of the Lord, I think, number one, about the hand of the Lord being a powerful hand, being a powerful hand. Joshua has just brought the children of Israel through. In Joshua chapter uh, 4, Joshua has brought the children of Israel through the sea, uh, and they are about to go into Jericho, into the promised land, and Joshua has commanded the people pick up the stones. They get the 12 stones, and they're building a monument, and Joshua says that this monument that they're building with these 12 stones is going to be for a purpose. He said that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you might fear the Lord your God forever. The hand of the Lord, it is a mighty, powerful hand. It was a powerful hand in creation uh, when God stretched out the heavens and weighed out the dust of the earth, set the mountains in a balance, as Isaiah says in chapter 40. Uh, it's a powerful hand of restoration. Thank God for the restoring hand of God. The powerful restoring hand of, of Jesus Christ reached down one evening in the garden after Peter had come out with his sword and chopped off the ear of, of Malchus and the high priest's servant, and he put that ear back on in restoration. The hand of the Lord is a mighty powerful hand. It's a powerful in creation. It's powerful in restoration. Let me say it's powerful in destruction for right after Joshua made this statement in Joshua 4, the children of Israel walk around Jericho for seven days and they encompass the city and the hand of the Lord was powerful in destruction, taking down the walls of Jericho. Powerful hand of the Lord. It's been a powerful hand in your life. It's been a powerful hand in my life. There are times in my life when I've seen the powerful hand of God restore me to a place of fellowship. There's been times in my life when I've seen the powerful hand of God come through and, and do some things in my life that caused me to turn back to him. There's been times in my life when I've seen the powerful hand of God do things for my family that nobody else could have done. The mighty hand of God is a powerful hand. Number two, it is a protecting hand. Psalm 139, the, Psalm 139, the psalmist said, If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Aren't you glad tonight for the, the mighty hand of protection? The hand of the Lord is a powerful hand. It's a protecting hand. It's a hand that's protected us through the storms of life. It's a hand that protected Israel at the Red Sea when they had nowhere to go. Mountains on one side, desert on one side. And, and the, the people of Israel, the army of Egypt is attacking the children of Israel. And God, separated by his mighty hand, gave them a protecting land to walk through on dry ground. The protecting hand of God was seen by the children of Israel at the Red Sea. The protecting hand of God was seen by Daniel down in the lion's den. Taking hand of God was seen by the disciples in the storm. The disciples are out on the boat. And Jesus has been up on the mountain praying for them. And they're in the midst of the sea and the storm has arisen. Jesus comes walking on the water and Peter walks out to him by faith. And then Christ gets back in the boat and with the wave of his hand and the, the calm of his voice, he speaks peace to the storm. Just one wave of the protecting hand of God can calm the storm in your life. Just one wave of the hand of God can put his protection around you. Just one halt of the protecting hand of God can keep you from the enemy, keep you from danger that could attack your life. I've been praying here for about five weeks straight. Every night our family gets down to pray together around nine o'clock. I've been praying every night for our church, for our church family, for my family, uh, for those that are kin to us, I've been praying that the mighty hand of God would cover us with his protection, that nothing could come against us, no onslaughts of the devil against our bodies, against our physical being. And let me say, it just takes one mighty protecting hand of Christ to stop that in your life that can be against you, to stop the, the strong one that's against you, the principality of the air. And I thank God tonight that there's a protecting hand of God in my life. There was a protecting hand of God on Paul's life when he was on the Isle of Melita. 
the last chapter of Acts, and there he is, and he makes a fire, and that viper comes out and bites him. But the protected hand of God protected Paul on the island of Melita. Thank God tonight for the protected hand of God. Number three, it's a providing hand. Psalm 145, 16 says, Thou openest thine hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. Satisfiest the desire of every living thing just by opening your hand. I'm reminded that God opened his hand to Elijah down by a brook, fed him every day. God opened his hand of provision to Elijah as he went to the little widow's house. And God allowed the provision to remain with the oil in the mill. God gave his hand of provision when Joseph was down in Egypt. God provided food for his family. God gave his provision to the thousands on the hillside when he took a, a couple of fish and a couple of loaves and divided them and multiplied them and provided for thousands. And you've seen the providing hand in your life and I've seen the providing hand in my life. I thank God for his providing hand. I can think back to times in my life when only God could have come through and he came through. I'm reminded tonight of a summer when Beth and I and the boys would live up in North Carolina and I was without work one summer. I worked for a school where I was there 40 weeks out of the year. And in the summer, I had to find work. And that summer, there was no work. And we had spent through our savings. And I got down on my knees one night with Miss Beth. And we prayed, now, Lord, if you don't do something mighty for us, Lord, if you don't come through for us, we're going to miss our house payment. And I went to the mailbox the next day, and there it was. You say, Brother Tom, that's just a story. No, that's not just a story. That's the providing hand of God. In my life, where I watched God do something that nobody else could do, when God put the check in the mail, God provided for me. And I thank God for the providing hand of God. I thank God for the protecting hand of God. I thank God for the powerful hand. But let me say, it's also a providential hand. For the psalmist said in 31, Psalm 31, verse 15, My times are in thy hand. My times are in my in thy hand. Let me say to you, young people tonight and those watching, young people, you have been born for this time. God has put you in this time by his mighty hand, his hand of providence. It is no mistake that God put you in this day. It is no mistake that God put you in the family that you that you live with. It is no mistake that you have the mom and dad that God gave to you. It is no mistake that God brought you to Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. It is no mistake that you're in the school which God has placed you in. It is no mistake tonight uh, where you are in your life. God has put you in a providential place. It, our times are in his hand. The hand of God is a providential hand. It was a providential hand that, that led uh that led Philip down to the Ethiopian eunuch. It was a providential hand that led Elisha to the Shulamite woman. And let me say tonight for me, it was the providential hand of God that led me and my family right here to Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. It was, I, I was in a living in a day when I considered where I was and what I was doing and thought, man, this is what God has for my life. I honestly thought in the early spring of 2005 that I was going to pastor a church in North Carolina. I thought God was opening a door for me, and I watched God right before my eyes shut one door and open up this one. And I saw the providential hand of God put me in a place uh, where my boys were able to grow up in a Christian school all their life. They got to be around their mama and papa all their life. They got to be with their family all their life. They got to grow up in a church that loved them, uh, that loved their mom and dad, that loved the Lord. God providentially in his time and in his will and in his way took his providential hand and opened everything up for my life. Thank God for the powerful hand of God. Thank God for the providing hand, the protecting hand, and the providential hand of God. But most importantly tonight, I want to say I thank God that the hand of the Lord is a pleading hand. The hand of the Lord is a pleading hand. For Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In Isaiah 65, Isaiah said, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto the rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, 
and after their own thoughts, God said, I have stretched out my hands to a people, and he surely did to the people of the world that he so loved, according to John the Beloved, for God so loved the world that he stretched out his hands, and he pleaded to the world, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let me say tonight, the pleading hands of God offer you rest. The pleading hands of God on the cross offer you life. The pleading hands of God offer you redemption. They offer you peace tonight from your storm. They offer you safety tonight. Now, they offer you tonight release from your sin debt. They offer you tonight protection. But most of all, they offer you tonight eternal life because the God of the universe hung his son Jesus on a cross. And I believe as he hung there, Oh, hallelujah, as he hung there, he invited the world to himself. He invited the world. He looked on his one hand and he said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, let me say to you tonight, the, the pleading hand of God is pleading to you to come to him for forgiveness. The pleading hand of God is pleading to you to come to him for freedom from your guilt for release from your sin, the addictions, the strongholds in your life. The pleading hand of God longs for you to come tonight and be set free from the life you're living. And let me say to you tonight, young people, some of you have been in church all your life, but if you've played a game, let me say to you tonight, the pleading hand of God invites you to come. The pleading hand of God begs for you to come to Jesus tonight, run to the cross, accept Jesus and Come to the pleading, loving hands of God that can wrap you up in his mercy and set you free. Oh, it is a powerful hand. It is a providing hand and a protecting hand. A great providential hand in your life and mine. Let me say that providential hand of God tonight might have led somebody to this message. Might have led you to watch tonight to hear that the providential hand of God has led you a place to hear tonight that he loves you. And he's pleading with you, come unto me. Come unto me and find rest. Come unto me and find life. Come unto me and be set free. I'm glad tonight that I have experienced the hand of the Lord in my life. I've experienced the hand of provision. I've experienced the hand of protection. I've experienced his hand of power in my life. Such a great power that he set me free from my sin debt that I could never pay. Set me on the rock that is higher than I Gave me new life, gave me a reason to live, gave me a, a reason to serve the King of Kings. I've been set free. I've been made new. And it's all because of the pleading hands that hung on a cross just for me. And he did it for you, that you might be touched. I'm reminded of the song that Michelle, Mandy, and I sang sometime back last year. Somebody touched me. Many years he walked in darkness. As he groped along the streets with his hands stretched out for pity for but just a bite to eat. Oh, it's the story of the blind man who met Jesus on his way. And with the master's touch, the man looked up and the scoffers heard him say, somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. I was blind, but praise his name. I now can see I was in darkness. Jesus found me since he touched me. I now can see. I'm glad tonight that I have been touched by the mighty hand of the Lord. Father, thank you tonight for the hand of God, the hand of the Lord that is mighty. Thank you, Lord, that I've been touched by the hand of the Lord. Oh, God, when you've touched us, Lord, we felt the presence of God, the peace of God, the power of God the providing hand of God upon our life. Lord, truly tonight we can say thank you that there's been a hand in our life that has led us all the way, that has guided us all the way through every step that we've taken, we've taken in the hand of God. Lord, we want to thank you tonight that we've been touched by your hand. Oh God, if there's one tonight watching that's never known the mighty hand of God in their life, may this be the night that they'll just run to the cross by simple faith Believe and trust Jesus. Be set free. May this be their moment of redemption. Lord, we want to thank you. Give you thanks and praise tonight for this land, for your touch upon us. Thank you, Lord, that you've not let us down. You've not failed us. We're looking to the high and mighty holy God of this universe. 
to be our help and our Redeemer and our Savior even in this day, God, to release us from this uh, great uh, virus, God, that's come upon the land. God, only you can do, Lord, no matter what man says, no matter what some governors say, no matter what some mayor might say, it is still the hand of God, hallelujah, that has touched this land. So, Lord, we look to you tonight one more time with your mighty hand. Would you touch this land, revive us, send a great awakening, God, touch America one more time for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me say to you, I love you. Young people watching tonight, I love you. I so miss you. Me and Miss Beth long to be with you. I so wish on Wednesday nights we were in the Timothy building preaching to you. But until that day, we're going to try to be an encouragement. Uh, we trust that you'll uh, continue to be strong in the Lord. We hope to see you Sunday at the drive-in service, uh, 11 a.m. Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. And we will, Lord willing, be on live streaming that service. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. I love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend.